Desmond Landers here, your startup advisor and partner in entrepreneurship. I'm in Camden, London. Uh, it's a small neighborhood, uh, a little bit outside of the, of the city center. Right behind me is the Camden Marketplace. I came here uh, today to buy some shirts and some sweaters. It's a really cool, eclectic place. I would highly recommend if you come to London, come to the Camden Market. But as I was going through the market, I was actually thinking about creating a video for you because it's a very entrepreneurial environment, right? And so I was trying to figure out how do all these merchants actually compete against one another when they're kind of selling the same stuff. And I started thinking, well, in your business, you're probably selling a very similar product or service to your competition. So the question is, how do you compete in a marketplace without bad mouthing your competition and still acquiring customers? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Before we get into all that though, I want to talk to you about a very simple methodology that they teach in business school. It's called the Blue Ocean Strategy. The Blue Ocean Strategy is it's very simple. It's basically, if you think about an ocean and it's a sunny day and you're in the middle of a blue ocean and you're the only boat or ship out there and you're fishing, naturally all the fish are going to come to you because you're the only game in town. But what happens if you show up the next day and now there's 20 different boats and everyone's fishing for the same school of fish? It's going to get really bloody because everyone's fishing and they're fighting and they're bumping their ships and they're getting jealous and all these crazy things are happening. This is what happens in a marketplace. Whether you're a car dealer, whether you're in insurance, whether you're in accounting, all these types of, you know, selling clothes, it doesn't matter. All these old school businesses, they are in red oceans. And you know what normally happens? When people come, they start discounting prices. Oh, well buy from me because I don't know how to do any other thing than discount my price, so you'll buy. That is the wrong way to do it. I would highly advise you never discount anything for a sale. If you're gonna do anything, always add more to the purchase. So in a couple seconds, we're gonna talk about how you can provide more value and I'm gonna give you three simple tips to survive in a marketplace in the Red Ocean, just like the Camden market here. So here's the three ways that you can actually compete in your marketplace and acquire customers regardless of competition, whether they're physically next to you or they're right next to you on Google. Number one, understand your buyer's needs. If you don't understand the needs of your buyer, they're not gonna buy from you. If you try to push something on them that they don't need or that they don't want, they're not gonna buy from you. The reason I bought this Camden Town t-shirt is because I wanted a t-shirt that actually said Camden on it. So when I go back home to Atlanta, Georgia, I'll be able to remember my time here in Camden. There was another shirt that was designed by a vendor that was right next to the guy. It was actually more better designed, uh, but I didn't buy it from him because it wasn't a part of what my needs were at that time, right? So you always understand your buyer's needs and that's the number one rule of selling is understand needs first, listen first, sell and, and, and uh, approach later. Number two, add bonuses. No one ever, ever does this. People always try to discount. Oh, well, if you're leaving my store, don't leave, don't leave, I'll give you a discount. If I don't want it, a discount doesn't mean anything to me. But if I do want it, a discount may mean something. But now you get into a price war with your competition because the next person next door is going to try to outbid your discount. So if you get 15%, they're going to give 20%. But I guarantee you what they will not do is they will not throw in more product or service for the same price. I bought this shirt for 10 pounds because the guy understood my needs. But if I was going to walk out the door to get it next door from the guy who was selling it for eight pounds, this guy could have easily said, well, I'll just give you a sweater for another five or 10 pounds, or I'll give you a scarf, something to increase the perceived value of what I'm getting. And I would have stayed there and bought from him. Number three, make the purchase easy. There's so many of these shops that I went around to that where I didn't have cash and I could not do a transaction with them because I had a credit card because they didn't either want to accept credit cards because of fees or what have you. Look, that's not my fault. Make it easy for me to buy from you. If you're in a business like insurance or if you're in accounting or if you're in some of these businesses, if we're going to do a deal, don't send me a contract through email. Tell me to go to the post office, sign it, and then send it back to you. Because if the same competitor sends me a digital contract, I'm going to buy with them. It doesn't even matter if it's more expensive, but it's easier for me to do the transaction. Just like these vendors here. If they only accept cash, but I have a debit card or a credit card, I've got to walk past them because I don't have the currency needed to get the transaction done. So in summary, uh, all you have to do is understand your buyer's needs, add bonuses, and then also make the transaction or the, the purchase easy. My name is Desmond Landers, your startup advisor and partner in entrepreneurship, signing out from the Camden Market in London, England. And this is a way for you to compete and stay in the game in a market that is not conducive for you 
but you can still win. I'll see you later.